uh, for being here uh, tonight. Uh, one item as a result uh, of our meeting and the reason we were in there a little bit longer, we need to add an item to tonight's agenda under old business. Uh, this is the settlement of a lawsuit uh, resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing settlement total amount of $22,500 for any and all claims, demands, damages against Macon Bibb County arising out of or connected in any way to Cheryl Davis versus Melvin Turner and Macon Bibb County, Georgia. Civil action number 17SCCV087539 pending in the state court of Bibb County. Can I get a motion to add that uh, to our, our old business agenda by Schlesinger, second by Commissioner Allen? All in favor of adding that item, signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, so we'll add that item to the end of our uh, old business agenda for final action uh, later this evening. Thank you all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. And again, I apologize for being a few minutes uh, late in getting started, uh, but we're uh, excited that you are all here. Uh, and I will call uh, at this point, uh, we always start our agenda uh, with an invocation uh, and pledge of allegiance. Uh, our invocation is, is I know, I, I, right, 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 right. I, 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 was, I was notified we, we've got a, We've got a pastor that's helping us out in a, in a, in a pinch. The, the assigned pastor that was called had a death in the family this afternoon and couldn't be with us, but uh, Pastor uh, John Glover of the Jordan Chapel Baptist Church is with us tonight. And, and Pastor Glover, if you would come to the podium, uh, please, sir. Um, and then we'll be uh, led uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance um, by one of the students, six years old, uh, that's out uh, and participating in the South Macon Arts Renaissance uh, Technology. So would you stand as you are able uh, for the uh, invocation and pledge of allegiance? Let us bow here for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come down once again asking that you would just look down on us with our mercy, with our concern. We do ask that you would touch all our hearts now that we might realize that it is you and only you that who has brought us thus far along. And we ask now, dear Heavenly Father, if it be your will, that you will look on this city, bless this city, bless the mayor, bless the commissioner, and touch their heart that all the decisions and things that they do at this business meeting will be fit and proper for their constituents. Then, dear Heavenly Father, we just ask, if it be your will, that you will just bless us all collectively as well as individually. And if you do that, Master, we'll be ever mindful and careful, surely we will, to give you all the praise and give you all the glory. Christ's sake, amen. Amen, amen. Please join, please join with the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic Please be seated. <laughs> Pastor Glover, thank you so much for, uh, for leading us in, in that invocation. We appreciate you helping us out. Uh, Pastor Glover with Jordan Chapel uh, Baptist Church, and we, we so do appreciate you, sir. The Pledge of Allegiance uh, uh, was read by Destiny Davis, and Destiny is six years old and a rising second grader at M.A. Evans Academy, where she maintains an A average. This year, Miss Davis received the Outstanding Leadership Award uh, and additional certificates for outstanding academics as she moved from kindergarten to first grade. She's a dedicated member of the SMART organization and part of the SMART Chess Club. She'd probably move, a, move around on a chessboard and, and beat me, uh, even though she works uh, hard uh, academically and is well-rounded. She enjoys playing with her cousins, members of the SMART organization, and playing outside. Destiny, thank you very much for being with you. We wish you good luck and all success in your future endeavors. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda uh, are the minutes of our pre-commission meeting held on February the 5th and our regular commission meeting also held on uh, February the 5th. Are there any changes, corrections, additions uh, to that? If not, can I get a motion to approve the minutes as by Schlesinger and second by Wynn to approve the minutes as uh, prepared and distributed? 
Um, if further discussion, if not, all in favor of approval of the minutes signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the minutes are approved. Uh, next, uh, it gives me uh, um, a lot of, of pleasure uh, to uh, invite uh, to the podium, and I'm going to come down there uh, where I've got a proclamation uh, prepared. Uh, I've got two proclamations, uh, uh, one uh, for Curtis Jones and another uh, for Dr. Tansy Gilcrease. So if y'all will let me get down there right quick and join me at the podium. This is a, a proclamation uh, from the Office of the Mayor and the Bibb County Commission uh, that reads as follows. So, Whereas uh, Dr. Curtis L. Jones was named 2019 National Superintendent of the Year uh, in February by the AASA, the School Superintendents Association, during its National Conference on Education after being named Georgia Superintendent of the Year in December 2018 by the Georgia School Superintendents Association. Let me just pause right there and say, ain't that wonderful, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> ain't that wonderful? I'm just telling you the honest truth. <laughs> I don't. And I know, I know your school board is thrilled to death, and I know all the teachers and everybody are proud of victory and progress, and if this ain't evidence of it, I ain't, grits ain't groceries. <laughs> I don't. Woo! All right, so the rest of the proclamation reads as follows. <laughs> Whereas Dr. Jones has since April 2015 led the Bibb County School District and our community through a time of educational revitalization and under his and the school board's leadership, along with the leadership and work of our principals, teachers, and other staff members, our community's graduation rate has increased from 58.9% in 2014 to 78.5% in 2018. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's really wonderful. Uh, with three of the high schools having greater than 80%, uh, putting the district on track to reach its goal of 90% graduation rate by 2025. And whereas Dr. Jones, the school board, and the district have earned multiple state and national recognitions for their work to improve student achievement, including the school board being named twice as distinguished board by the Georgia School Boards Association, earning Georgia's College Board Linking Award in 2017 and Digital School District Survey Award for large student population districts in 2018 and being featured in national publications for raising achievement, addressing equity, and improving stakeholder communications. And whereas Dr. Jones recognizes the need for everyone to be engaged with and invested in improving education for all children in order to give them a brighter future and to improve our community for years to come, and he serves on multiple boards locally and across the state to help engage resources, volunteers, and more in the success of our children. And whereas Dr. Jones is an educator with more than 20 years of experience, from junior ROTC instructor to high school principal to assistant superintendent to superintendent before coming to Bibb County, whereas he retired as a lieutenant colonel from the United States Army and is a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point and Nova Southeastern University. And he's married to Evelyn, a retired elementary school teacher herself, and together they have three children, two granddaughters and a grandson, would be great-grandson, I guess. Uh, now, therefore, I, Robert A.B. Rickard, uh, do hereby proclaim February the 14th, which was the day of his award out in Las Vegas, 2019 is Dr. Curtis L. Jones, National Superintendent of the Year Day or Macon, Bibb County. And I encourage all of us to congratulate him. Dr. Jones, bless you. My <laughs> pictures, all the school boys. You know, uh, Dr. Jones, he couldn't do this by himself. <laughs> he couldn't do this by himself. He got to have help. And this uh, is another proclamation, and we're so proud of Tangy Gil uh, Gilcrease 
uh, for this. Where's uh, Dr. Tansy Gilchrist, uh, Bibb County School District Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning? was named a national finalist uh, for the Women in School Leadership Central Office Award by the AASA, the School Superintendent Association, during its national conference in education. Whereas under Dr. Kilcrease's leadership, the teaching and learning department has developed expectations for curriculum, instruction, and assessment to be consistent uh, across the district, it established a district literacy leadership team to monitor its literacy plan in conjunction with community members and organizations, help lead efforts that awarded the district one of 38 L4GA grants and earned it, uh, in the, earned it the College Board Linking Award. And whereas Dr. Kilcrease, the work as principal was featured nationally in two books, two schools she served became Title I distinguished schools. The high school she led was recognized statewide for its 46% change in graduation rate. She is in the 2012, she is the 2012 recipient of the Dina Burgess Award from the Georgia College and State University, and she'll uh, present in March of 2019 on the district's literacy plan at the ASCD National Conference. Whereas Dr. Kilcrease, 26 year educator whose love for children inspires her work, a love that led her to lead an early career in journalism to realize her true calling in education, first as a middle school teacher, then as an assistant principal, principal at the elementary, middle, and high school levels, director of school improvement in Peach County, assistant superintendent, now the assistant superintendent of teaching and learning in Bibb County, where Dr. Kilcrease earned a bachelor of science in journalism from Georgia College, master of education and specialist in education from Georgia College and State University, a doctorate in administration and supervision, from Argosy University and certification in leadership, math, science, social studies, language, arts, gifted teacher, super support, ESOL, English is a second language, and Microsoft Innovative Educator and graduated from <laughs> Georgia Superintendent of Professional Development. Now, therefore, I, Robert A. B. Ricker, do hereby proclaim February the 15th, the day she got this award, Dr. Tansy Kilcrease, Women in School Leadership, Central Office Day in Megan Bibb County. Congratulations to you. Bless you.
All right. Well, wasn't that wasn't that wonderful and wasn't that exciting? I I just tell you the truth. I'm, we're all so we're all so proud. Oh, so proud of them. Wow. <laughs> Great things going on. Great things going on. Uh, the next item on our agenda um, are public comments on agenda items. Uh, this is when people have the opportunity to talk to us about items that are on the agenda for action uh, tonight uh, so that we hear from you before we vote on them. Uh, there is uh, a one person that wants to talk to us uh, about item K under old business and item H uh, under, uh, old, uh, under new business, I'm sorry. Uh, and that's Mike Odom. Uh, Mr. Odom, uh, thank you very much for being here with us tonight. And uh, you, you are recognized for five minutes, sir. Okay, this this will probably be one of the briefest comments I've had. Uh, item KO Business, thank you for nearly half a million dollars for funding for the fire department. That's an important essential business here. Thank you for doing that. Uh, I'd certainly like to see you uh, reciprocate with at least that amount for the sheriff's department. They're understaffed. They've got a lot of needs. But uh, thank you for uh, the resolution moving some splossed monies over to them. Uh, item H under new business. Uh, I do support you having a three year, nearly $100,000 contract with Dell Services for IT technical support. Uh, kind of have a self-serving reason for that. Uh, last year, I made an open records request for the tax-exempt properties owned by the medical center, and I was promptly provided that exclusive list of 71 properties. Two weeks ago, I sent, sent an identical request, just substituted Mercer for the medical center, and I was told that you can't provide that list. So I, I guess our computer system is dumber now than it was four months ago. So I would ask that, that be complied with. And in an effort to comply with it, and I appreciate it, I was given a 164-page document that listed 2,939 tax-exempt properties in Bibb County that totaled $2.5 billion. Uh, I didn't ask for it, you know, but it's, it's really kind of fascinating how many people entities don't pay property. It goes from A to Z alphabetically, and. You know, first one up is Aberlina Baptist Church and the American Legion Post. A gentleman named James Durham has some properties. I don't know why he's tax exempt and maybe Sarah Hunt's not. Something called GNC Properties, Angleside Baptist Church, Macon Tech, Wesleyan College. Uh, so, I mean, if the computer system last October could provide the information, why can't it require the information I asked for two weeks ago? Uh, so I'm re restating my open records request for the listing of tax exempt properties for Mercer University or the Corporation of Mercer University or any also known as affiliates. And Ms. Ross, I do owe you an, an edited request. <laughs> and I, I promise I'll get that for you. <laughs> That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Oden. Appreciate you being here and, and appreciate your interest in all that we do. <laughs> Why, sure. Uh, ne next item on our agenda um, are reports from our, our standing uh, committees. Um, and uh, the first uh, committee to report is uh, operations and finance, and, and, and that uh, report will be given to us by Chairman Watkins. Chairman Watkins. Thank you, sir. The operations and finance committee met on February 12th and took the following actions. The committee accepted two grants for the Georgia County Internship Program both for the amount of $2,173. One grant will support an intern in the district attorney's office, and the other will be for the county attorney's office. The committee approved a lease agreement with River Edge Behavioral Health Center in the amount of $403,750. The committee approved entering into a memorandum of understanding with Middle Georgia State University for installation of public Wi-Fi and Poplar Street Park which will be funded for 18 months by a town, downtown challenge grant funded in the amount of $39,848. The, 
The committee also approved replacing section 4-60 through sections through section 4-70 of chapter four of the code to provide for the temporary continuation of all alcohol licenses. The committee approved amending chapter six of the code by adding a section for the purposes of establishing a community redevelopment tax incentive program. The committee approved the following splash projects and appropriations of up to $865,278 to be distributed equally between the health department and department of mental health. A appropriations of up to $480,710 for firefighting gear, thermal imaging cameras and self-contained breathing apparatuses and a self-service truck. The appropriations of 1.9 million to the Macon Water Authority for stormwater management. The appropriations of $482,500 to the Urban Development Authority for building improvements to the Tubman Museum. And a final appropriation of $61,600 to the Grand Opera House for its final payment to Britton Bray and Thompson. This concludes the Operations and Finance Committee report. Uh, thank you, Chairman Watkins. Uh, next uh, uh, committee is Economic and Community Development, and that report will be given to us by Chairman Lucas. <coughs> Chairman Lucas. Thank you. Uh, the Economic and Community Development Committee met on February 12, 2019. The committee heard an update from the Macon Cemetery Preservation uh, Commission on their efforts to restore uh, Linwood, historic Linwood Cemetery through a columbarium project in partnership with the coroner's office and we will continue that item for discussion. There were other items that were carried forward and will be discussed um, in the committee. Uh, the traffic, downtown traffic and uh, parking, recreation, Keep making be beautiful Rosa Parks Square. And then there was one final discussion item uh, which the chair brought, and that was the naming of I-1675 interchange in honor of MIA's POWs and State Senator David E. Lucas Sr. These are all uh, in the discussion phases. This concludes the report of the Economic and Community Development Committee. Thank you, Chairman Lucas. Uh, uh, Chairman Shepard, I understand no report from public safety. No report. All right. And so the next uh, committee at the end of the report is uh, facilities and engineering. Uh, and Chairman Jones will give us that report. Chairman Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On February the 12th, we met facilities and engineering committee and took the following action. The committee approved conveying 2.261 square feet of property located in the right of way adjacent to 218 Madison Street to the Land Bank Authority. The committee approved flying a National League of Families POW MIA flag underneath the American flag, sh flag shown, flown at the Government Center and Courthouse. And my understanding is they're going to present those flags that March the 19th, Joe, or Janice. They'll be presenting those to us so that they can be uh, hoisted up and flown. And that concludes the report. Uh, thank you, Chairman Jones. Uh, next item, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on, on, on our agenda tonight is the consent agenda. Um, and these are uh, applications for alcohol beverage uh, licenses. Um, each of these uh, license applications um, is accompanied by all of the required paperwork, uh, which includes uh, a certification from the sheriff of a satisfactory background check of the applicant or, or agent, a certification from business development services that the appropriate fees uh, have been paid, a certification from the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, that they are in an, a, a, an area properly zoned uh, for the location of alcoholic beverage sales, a distance measurement certification from the engineer's office uh, to say that it meets all of the distance requirements as far as separation from prohibited schools, churches, and structures uh, like that, and the, 
advertisement that ran in the uh, Telegraph. Each of these applications uh, is accompanied by all of that documentation. Uh, so just let me summarize and say the first one um, is by Jack of All Trades Concessions, LLC, doing business as Daiquiri's and more, uh, located at 378 Second Street in downtown. Um, it is near the Capitol Theater, uh, and th the application is for mixed drinks, beer, and wine to be consumed on the premises at that location. The next uh, uh, application is uh, UMA Bhagwati uh, LLC, doing business as Z1 Express, located at 6620 Columbus Road, Suite A in Lizella. Uh, that is for beer and wine package sales to go uh, at that location. Uh, the next item, C, um, is ARK, or ARK Express, doing business as Village Market, uh, located at 1920 uh, Gray Highway. Um, that is a change of ownership and is for beer and wine package sales to go uh, at that location. Uh, next item, D, uh, is uh, RSK Bar. Uh, doing business as Northside Cheers, located at 3852 Northside Drive, and that is for mixed drinks, beer, and wine to be consumed on the premises at that location. Item E uh, is a license application for M and S Business LLC, doing business as Macon Food Mart, located at 5220 Jeffersonville Road, Dry Branch, Georgia and that's for beer and wine package uh, sales to go at that location. Uh, next item F is a uh, alcohol beverage license application for Heaven Restaurant LLC, uh, located at 3555 Mercer University Drive, uh, Suite 1062 um, in Macon. That is for mixed drinks, beer and wine to be consumed on the premises at that location. And finally, item G, is an alcohol beverage uh, application from the Cherry Street Hookah LLC located at 557 uh, Cherry Street, and that is merely to allow for a brown bagging uh, at that location for people to bring in alcoholic beverages in a brown bag at that location. The Committee of the Whole uh, discussed these, and Committee of the Whole uh, recommends approval of all of these licenses. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the issuance of these licenses signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and those licenses will be uh, issued as requested. Uh, next uh, item on our agenda then is old business, and these are items that were taken up and discussed at committee meetings uh, last week, with the exception of the last two that we'll talk about a little bit later. But the first uh, is a, a resolution to authorize the mayor to select uh, the option uh, for guaranteed minimum interest rate of the fixed annuity contract uh, that's available uh, under the Macon Bibb County Deferred uh, Compensation Plan, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to select that option approved by the commission for purposes of changing the guaranteed minimum interest rate of the fixed annuity contract available under the Macon Bibb County Deferred Compensation Plan and Trust and for other lawful purposes. Uh, the Committee of the Whole uh, recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is uh, item B under old business uh, and that's an internship for the county attorney's office provided by ACCG <coughs> and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the acceptance of a summer 2019 Georgia County Internship Program grants the total amount of $2,173 from the ACCG Civic Affairs Foundation that have been awarded to the Macon Bibb County Attorney's Office to fund one internship for the 2019 summer term and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. 
Next is a similar internship, but this one for the Public Defender's Office, uh, and again by ACCG, so I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Boop County Commission authorizing the acceptance of one summer 2019 Georgia County Internship Program grant in the amount of $2,173 from the ACCG Civic Affairs Foundation that had been awarded to the Macon Judicial Circuit Public Defender to fund one internship for 2019 summer term and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is a, a rental agreement uh, for space for River Edge Behavioral Health Center, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon <coughs> County Commission to authorize the mayor to execute a lease agreement with River Edge Behavioral Health Center in the amount of $403,750.08 per year for office space at 175 Emory Highway in substantially the same form attached here to as Exhibit A and for other purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is item uh, E, um, which is uh, uh, Wi-Fi in Poplar Street Park. Um, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Biff County Commission authorizing the mayor to enter a memorandum of understanding with Middle Georgia State University for the installation of a public Wi-Fi network in Poplar Street Park to be funded for 18 months for $39,848 in downtown challenge grant funds received by Middle Georgia State University from the Community Foundation of Central Georgia with no local match and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next item F um, is uh, a, a new section to be added uh, to the uh, uh, Code of Ordinances uh, to provide for temporary alcohol licenses in under certain conditions, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Biff County Commission to repeal and replace section 4-60 through 4-70 of Chapter 4 of the Inaugural Code of Ordinances for Macon Bibb County, now reserved to provide for the temporary continuation of alcohol licenses for certain changes of business ownership and to provide for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next uh, is an uh, ordinance uh, to amend Chapter 6 uh, of the Code uh, for a new Community Redevelopment Tax Incentive Program, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission to amend Chapter 6 of the Code of Ordinances of Macon Bibb County by adding a new Article 11 for purposes of establishing a Community Redevelopment Tax Incentive Program and to provide for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next is a, a resolution of the commission um, uh, to confirm its consent to the issuance uh, of uh, the last three and a half million dollars of Urban Redevelopment Authority bonds uh, for Newtown uh, projects, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission confirming its consent to the issuance by the Macon Bibb County Urban Development Authority of the previously authorized but unissued portion of the Macon Bibb County Urban Development Authority Taxable <coughs> Revenue Bonds Urban Development Concepts LLC project and for other purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. 
Uh, next is uh, item I, uh, which is an ordinance to use uh, splost funds uh, for certain improvements on Jeffersonville Road, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macomville County Commission approving and authorizing the appropriation of up to $100,000 from SPLOS bond proceeds and our SPLOS revenues from 2019 roads and bridges other Jeffersonville line item as set forth in the SPLOS project timeline to cover the required match for GDOT funds and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Lucas got your light on. We are going to be asking, I am going to uh, ask the legal department to uh, draw a resolution which requests the Macon Area Transportation Group to look at um, the remainder of Jeffersonville Road because this project will not cover the entire Correct. length of that uh, road. So there's a, another section of it that goes out under the uh, um, train um, railroad, overpass railroad and then on out to uh, 80. And so um, we, we are asking the legal department to draw that resolution. And uh, I'm asking if my fellow commissioners would endorse that so that we can take it to the MATS committee and ask them to start now looking at what will be done for the remainder of that road because we can't have a nice road with lowered speed limits more lighting safer and then you stop it at Re recreation road so we've got but that's the extent of the project that's been approved so we've got to put in place something that takes care of the rest of it so that's what our intention is and i welcome your uh support on that thank you commissioner lucas is there further discussion Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance uh, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the ordinance is adopted. Next uh, is an ordinance to spend some additional SPLOS fund uh, uh, for the health department and the mental health uh, organization uh, as well. I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance <coughs> of the Macomb County Commission approving and authorizing the appropriation of up to $865,278 from SPLOS bond proceeds and our SPLOS revenues from 2019 Cultural and Public Health Department slash Mental Health Line item as set forth in the SPLOS project timeline to be distributed equally between the Health Department and Mental Health for their capital projects and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next is an ordinance to appropriate some additional uh, SPLOS uh, proceeds um, for the fire department and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission approving and authorizing the appropriation of up to $480,710 from SPLOS bond proceeds and our SPLOS revenues from 2019 Public Safety Fire Upgrade Line item as set forth in the SPLOS project timeline to cover the cost of purchasing firefighting assembly, a thermal imaging camera, self-contained breathing apparatus, and a service truck and for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next uh, is an ordinance to appropriate additional splash revenues for stormwater management and payments uh, to the Macon Water Authority for that purpose. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission approving and authorizing <laughs> the appropriation of up to one million nine hundred twenty-two thousand. $840 from SPLOS bond proceeds and our SPLOS revenues from 2019 stormwater management, various line item to be distributed to the Macon Water Authority pursuant to the terms of the intergovernmental agreement and the appropriation of up to $481,696 from SPLOS bond proceeds and our SPLOS revenues from 2019 stormwater management, emergency line item to pay for emergency repairs handled by the Macon 
by Macon Bibb County as set forth in the SWAS project timeline and for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next is a, an ordinance to appropriate some additional SPLOST funds. Um, this for the uh, uh, Urban Development Authority to make improvements uh, in the Tubman Museum. Uh, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb <coughs> County Commission approving and authorizing the appropriation of up to $482,500 from SPLOST bond proceeds and our SPLOST revenues from 2019 cultural and public Tudman line item to transfer said amount to the Urban Development Authority for the capital campaign for building improvement of the Tudman Museum as set forth in the SPAS project timeline and for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, finally, there's an ordinance to appropriate some additional SPLOS funds to pay a final outstanding bill on the Grand Opera House for the architect's fees, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb <coughs> County Commission approving and authorizing the appropriation of up to $61,600 from SPLOS bond proceeds and our SPLOS revenues from 2019 cultural and public Grand Opera line item to make the final payment of BTBB's contract as set forth in the SPAS project timeline and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, finally, is a resolution to approve the 19th Amendment to the 2018 SPLOS Project Timeline, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to approve the 19th Amendment to the 2018 SPLOS Project Timeline and Budget as presented by the SPLOS Project Manager and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next uh, is a, a resolution uh, to convey uh, some property uh, regarding an encroachment into the right-of-way by an old house that's there at 218 Madison Street, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution <coughs> of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to convey 2,261 square feet of real property located in the county right-of-way adjacent to 218 Madison Street to the Macon Bibb County Land Bank Authority and for other purposes. The Facilities and Engineering Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is a resolution requesting uh, the MIA POW flag to be flown um, it, uh, both in front of Government Center and the County Courthouse, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission requesting that the Macon Bibb County government fly a National League of Families POW MIA flag underneath the American flags flown at Macon Bibb County Government Center and the Macon Bibb County Courthouse and for other lawful purposes. Uh, the Facilities and Engineering Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. <coughs> Next, we've got a, a resolution uh, to declare our opposition to the uh, State House of Representatives Bill Number 302 relating to preemption of local government building design standards and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. And you'll have to give me one minute because I did not get that back. Oh dear. Well, no. let's see if I've got it. Um, I got it. You got it? <laughs> A resolution to declare its opposition to House Bill 302 relating to the preempt preemption of local government building design standards 
for one and two family dwellings and for other lawful purposes. Committee of the Whole recommends uh, approval. Is there further discussion? Uh, Commissioner Jones, got your light on first, sir. Yes, sir. I, I didn't really have a feel for this when we discussed it, Committee of the Whole. I've since talked with GAR Legislative and Government Affairs, and I'm all for local control. I believe in local control. But what I think what we have here is a potential, we don't really understand how far this goes, it's a potential overreach, as it has to do with aesthetic building designs. And for instance, in some parts of the state, they have prohibited slab construction on new homes. This applies to residential homes. You go to Houston County, they're mostly slab homes. So I think what we do is, you know, and, and they have dictated in others that it had to be all brick. It's one thing to have a homeowners association whereby they're saying, you know, all the houses have to be uh, brick or vinyl or they can't be this or that. And that's one thing because you, you sign on to that going in. But I think what we're going to do by this is take away the choice for the consumer potentially and Georgia Association of Realtors feels you know one of their main legs or components is private property rights so they look out, look at it as a violation of private property rights so I'm going to encourage folks I'm not going to support the pro the uh, prohibition of 302 we ha we have state building codes which we discussed and we're getting along just fine like we are and potentially you, you set up taking the choice away from the consumer. That's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. So when you start dictating where it has to have a crawl space or can't have slab or, or, or whatever, then you're limiting the choice of the consumer. So I'm not in favor of this resolution and neither is the Georgia Association of Realtors. It's a it's a, uh, I think this goes to committee tomorrow, voted out of committee at the state house, but I'm not in favor of it. I'd, I'd encourage you to think it through. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Jones. Uh, uh, may I'm sorry, we got Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor, excuse me? Bill 302, right? Oh, it opposes. It, it, it opposes it, it House Bill. It expresses our opposition. Opposes House, House Bill 302, which would prohibit local governments from regulating building design elements. It really has to do with aesthetics, although it could have to do with in in, in Fulton County and Oconee. They're they're having problems with people dictating to them. For instance, you can't build on a slab or or things of that nature. And I, I, I think that's an overreach by government and, and, it, and it shouldn't shouldn't be that way. So you think 302 is a bad idea if you don't have state money for it? I don't, uh, I don't it says would prohibit local governments, so they kind of worded it right. in the double negative here, would prohibit right. local government from regulating right. building designs. Right. It's a It's a preemption. The it's state, a preemption the of, state is, of the local state. control. So. Correct. It's a state preemption of local control. So that that's. Oh, and let, let me. I got uh, Mayor Pro Tem got you next, and then I uh, got Commissioner Wynn as well. Yes, uh, I, I think we'd ask. Uh, we we rely on uh, some of the experts that sit around the table, and I I, I know we'd ask uh, the commissioner to get and share us the information. So we could make the right decision on this. Uh, I had my light on because I was about to say on this resolution that you know a lot of times folks don't realize and pick up that we were right now at 99 percent in agreement on everything tonight, and so uh, I'm still just trying to get clarification. Uh, I mean I'm going to approve it as stated, but uh, I got to got confused when the commissioner asked the question and I. I Think the I don't know. I'm not sure if the commissioners just just not clear on uh, 
on, on, the, on the information. But I, I think the whole thing was we're trying to support the resolution. So I was just confused because right. I was dependent on you, your clarification, because we had suggested go out and, you know, talk to the relatives and, and get us information. So still not sure where you are, but I think just as, a, as it's presented, I'm going to support it as, as it's presented. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Commissioner Wynn got your light on that. Uh, yes, sir, thank you. I echo the comments of Commissioner Jones, and I think that what he's saying is he opposes House Bill 302, and which is what I oppose it to, and that's what this resolution is saying, that we are opposing that House Bill. Correct. I hope I'm not speaking incorrectly for Commissioner Jones, but I believe that's what he meant. It goes too far, it reaches too far into what we do as a personal, uh, what we do with our homes and how we build them, so I'm, a, I'm I'm in favor of this, and I oppose House Bill 302. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Uh, uh, Commissioner Watkins, got your light on, sir. Oh, no, I yield. Okay. Is there, is there further discussion? Uh, hearing, hearing none, uh, then all in favor of the resolution to... Oh, I'm sorry. Prohibits local government from regulating building designs. I don't want local governments to regulate building designs. I want I want customer choice and freedom of choice. Well, the only only thing I'll try to do is this is the this is from the Georgia Municipal Association. No, I, I take that back. This is from the ACCG, the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, and uh, they say that uh, action is needed. Uh, that uh, Representative Vance Smith introduced House Bill 302, a mammoth preemption bill that usurps local government's ability to regulate <coughs> building design elements in single or double family dwellings. The proposed bill would prohibit the following local building standards, exterior building color, type or style of exterior cladding material, style or materials of roof structures or porches, oh, Exterior non-structural architectural ornamentation, location or architectural styling of windows and doors, including garage doors, number and types of rooms, interior layout of rooms and types of foundation structures approved under state minimum standard codes. So this would preempt us from being able to regulate locally uh, those items. And I instead, would have a, a, the state would set that uniform across the state. Yeah, and so I can it would preempt us from doing all that. So that's, that's why <coughs> we're expressing our Sounds opposition like to 302. If we think local control is best and, and having our own ability to decide this, we're about to be preempted by 302 so that we would have no say so. So, in other words, in a, as I understand it, somebody could put, put a, a vinyl clad house in the middle of a, a, an existing subdivision. And whether you like vinyl clad house or whether it fits in with the subdivision or not, that, that's what I understand would also be involved here. Well, we don't have say so now. Oh, no, we do. We, we can set that now. Well, so I, 302 takes it away from Take it away from Takes it, it away. Right, so I'm yeah. for 302 because of so you want to preempt us. I think we've got some unintended consequences which are already showing up around the state for instance the ex example I gave okay. you can't build a house on a slab well I, I was in a CE class earlier today and they said that's the most efficient way to to build a property and there are a lot of houses in South Bibb that are on a slab there are a lot of houses in House of County on a slab so uh, the state building code is what regulates the whole state, and I just I just see potentially we're going to take away choice from the consumer, and that's to me that's not a good thing. So, I'll, all right, I'd be in favor of House Bill 302 because it prohibits local governments from re regulating. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, got your light on again. Oh, I was just going to say roll call vote. Roll call, roll call vote. vote. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll we'll do we'll do that, sir. Commissioner Allen. A question for me, please. You're an attorney, and you got an attorney next to you. I'm going to let him answer it then. It doesn't matter. Both of <laughs> y'all can answer. I just want somebody to clarify, because when I left that room in there, I thought that if we voted for house, this house bill, that we were saying, yeah, state, take it over. Give us to it. 
But that's no, not this, what it is. No, this is express. This is express. We want okay. Do we vote no? We don't want the state, or we don't want House Bill 301. Okay. I mean, because all this jabber talk we've had out here today. I mean, you've got me all confused. I am going to be up front with well, you. Let me read it real quick. It's a resolution to make the Mid County Commission. This was a model uh, resolution that was sent to us, I think, by ACCG. But a resolution to make the Mid County Commission to declare its opposition to House Bill 302 relating to the preemption of local government building design standards for one and two family dwellings. And this is what it requests. It says, now therefore be it resolved that Macon Bibb County hereby opposes and requests that the legislative delegation from Macon Bibb County vote in opposition to House Bill 302, which provides for preemption of local building design standards. So this will be just requesting your local dele delegate, legislative delegation uh, to vote against this 302, which has been proposed by Legislator Vance Smith. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. So to keep, to keep our function that we have with planning and zoning and everything else going here, you would we have to vote. You, you would vote yes, yes, yes tonight. For this. Yes, yes, you support the opposition to 302. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Jones, got your light on again, sir? The, the oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yes, that's you. Yeah, new, newer neighborhoods control design by uh, protective covenants. Homeowners Association protective covenants that say you can't build some crazy looking house. It's got to be a minimum square footage for a single story and two story and, and et cetera. So that's that's their protection there. Uh, the older some some older neighborhoods don't have covenants anymore, uh, but it's been a problem and it's popping up around the state more and more. That's what I'm hearing from government affairs. And so they don't think, it, Georgia Association of Realtors doesn't think it's a good thing. I'm a member of the Georgia Association of Realtors and the National Association of Realtors, so I, I agree with their thinking. So if, I, if we vote, you're in support, is, if we're in support, you're, well, your, your resolution is that no, you, no, no. No, you would vote, no, no. right, you'd vote no, no tonight, uh, you, no, no, no. All right. I, I support the legislation, but all right. All right. Is, is, there, is, is there further discussion before we get to a roll call vote? Uh, if 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 not, then uh, let's let's call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Wynn, how do you vote? That's a, that's that would be a, a yes. You're a, yes. You're in opposition, Commissioner Schlesinger. Yes. Correct. <laughs> th 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 those those in favor of supporting this resolution in opposition to 302 would vote yes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner yes. Schlesinger. Yes. Uh, uh, Commissioner Lucas. Yes. yes. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Votes no. Commissioner Bivens. Yes. Votes yes. Uh, Commissioner Allen. Yes. Votes yes. Uh, Commissioner Shepard. Yes. Votes yes. Uh, Commissioner Watkins. Votes yes. Uh, Commissioner M M Pro Tem Tillman. Votes yes. Uh, so it's uh, uh, one one to eight, or I, I should say eight to eight to eight to one, and the ayes have it. Uh, the resolution is adopted. Uh, we have one additional item on the old business that we added to the agenda, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by uh, caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing settlement in the total amount of twenty two thousand five hundred dollars for any and all claims, demands, or damages against Macon Bibb County arising out of or connected in any way to Cheryl Davis versus Melvin Turner and Macon Bibb County, Georgia, Civil Action <laughs> Number 17, SCCV-087539, pending in the State Court of Bibb County and for other lawful purposes. The Committee of the Whole recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, the resolution uh, is adopted. Uh, that brings us now to new business. <clears throat> there are a number of uh, items of new business that have been prepared that I will read and refer to committee uh, for further uh, study. Uh, however, l let me be sure and tell you, the final agenda will come out on Friday afternoon. Uh, check the agenda to see if any other items have come down during the week from the attorney's office and have been referred uh, to the uh, com 
committees that'll uh, discuss this next Tuesday morning, again at nine, nine o'clock a.m. in the committee uh, meeting room. Uh, that'll be the 26th, uh, Tuesday the 26th. First item of new business is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, uh, January 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2019, Victims of Crime Act competitive allocation in the amount of $2,850 requiring a match fund of $713 to the Macon Judicial Circuit uh, District Attorney's Office. I'm going to refer that to the Operations and Finance uh, Committee. Uh, item B uh, is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a Criminal Justice uh, Coordinating Council January the 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2019, Victims of Crime Act competitive allocation in the amount of $3,879 requiring a match fund of $970 uh, to the Bibb County Solicitor General's Office. I'm going to refer that to the Operations and Finance Committee. Uh, item C is a resolution authorizing the Macon Tennis Association to permit the lawful service of alcoholic beverages at the St. Patrick's Day Round Robin to be held at the John Drew Smith Tennis Center on March the 17th, 2019, and the District League Championship to be held at the John Drew uh, Smith Tennis Center on May the 2nd and to permit attendees to consume alcoholic beverages at the John Drew Smith uh, Tennis Center during the Round Robin and the Championship. I'm going to refer that to the Economic and Community Development uh, Committee. Uh, item D is a resolution to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for preliminary engineering of Forest Hill Road Phase 2 from Wimbish Road uh, to Vineville Avenue in the amount of $68,000 payable from 2017 SPLOS bond funds and or 2018 SPLOS revenues, roads and bridges, Forest Hill Road line item. I'm going to refer that to the Operations and Finance Committee. Uh, next, item E <clears throat> is an ordinance to approve a supplemental appropriation uh, to the transfer of $476,201 from fund balance in the FY19 budget to Health and Welfare Macon Bibb County Transit Authority for operating reserve shortfall. Let's to replenish that fund. Going to refer that to Operations and Finance uh, Committee. Uh, item F is an ordinance to approve a budget amendment uh, to the FY19 budget for the transfer of funds in the amount of $77,932 from district attorney's salaries, full-time benefits, FCA, benefits, health insurance, and benefits pension line items to the contract labor contractual services line item to hire two district attorneys under the SPACER uh, contract. I'm going to refer that to the Operations and Finance Committee. Uh, then uh, item G under new business is a resolution to recognize the month of March uh, 2019 as Women's History Month. And I'm going to refer that to the Economic and Community Development Committee. Item H is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an installment agreement with Dell Financial Services, LLC in the amount of $96,188.68 per year for three years for technical support services for Macon Bibb County's backup data storage systems to be paid from IT's general systems and network repairs and maintenance computer hardware budget. Going to refer that to the Operations and Finance Committee. Again, that is all of the new business that's been prepared uh, and sent down by the attorney's office thus far, but there could be others uh, later this week so check the agenda that comes out on Friday um, for what we'll take up next Tuesday in committee meetings. Uh, we are down now to the next to the last uh, agenda item, uh, and that's public comments on non-agenda items. This is when the public has the opportunity to come and bring to our attention anything and everything uh, of, that they think we need to be concerned about. And we've got several people that have signed, signed up uh, to talk to us about a vari variety of, of things. And first, <coughs> uh, Donald Richardson, uh, who has some grassroots uh, reflections for us. Mr. Richardson, thank you for being here again, sir. We, we appreciate uh, your being here and appreciate your patience. You're recognized for five minutes, uh, sir.
book of Exodus, chapter 21. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant six years, ye shall, he shall serve. And in the seven, he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. If the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, and he shall also bring him to the door, and unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. And if a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not be diminished. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. He that smiteth a man so that he dies shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand. Then I would appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. If a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with gall, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. If a man strive and hurt a woman with a child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished, according to as the woman's husband will lay upon him and he shall pay as the judges determined. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, strike for strike. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid that it perished, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out his manservant's tooth or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. And if an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. Yeah, but if the ox was wont to push with his horn in time past, and it hath been testified to his owner, he hath not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owners also shall be put to death. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he have gored a son or have gored a daughter, according to his judgment, that it shall be done unto him. If the ox shall push a man's servant or maid servant, he shall give unto their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit, 
Mr. Richardson, thank you very much uh, for those grassroots uh, reflections. Always uh, uh, interesting to, to listen and absorb. We, we appreciate that very much. Uh, next, Mr. David O'Leary wants to talk to us about uh, hunting in South Bibb County. Mr. O'Leary? Thank you for your patience, uh, sir. Uh, you are recognized for five minutes. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, sir. And, and I Mayor, think I have you. a handout that you put yes. up here <coughs> at, at, at my desk about South Bibb hunting. That's correct, sir. All right, each, sir. Each one of you should have one of those. And uh, in return for my patience, could I get you to grant me three extra minutes on top of my five? <laughs> See how much you can get done in five, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm here to bring your attention to actions by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources to open residential areas of South Bibb County to the public for the purpose of hunting large and small game. You have the booklet that I've prepared for you. Special thanks to Commissioner Lucas and Commissioner Allen who called me to uh, let me know that they were sympathetic to this issue as a uh, result of the letter that I sent to all of you commissioners. I hope you all read that. <coughs> I am David O'Leary Sr. Uh, I am 61 years old. I've lived on uh, St. Clara Drive for 40 years. I'm here tonight with some of my neighbors, and my wife and my old, uh, son are here as well, and I'd like to acknowledge them and thank them for, for coming out to support. But um, in 1980, we bought our property there on St. Clara Drive, my wife and I, and we built our home there. We've raised eight children there, four sons and four daughters. I've worked for the Air Force for 41 years uh, as an aircraft mechanic, as an overhaul planner, and I'm currently employed by a defense contractor uh, working as a logistics analyst on the Joint Stars program on Robbins Air Force Base. <coughs> In July of last year, the Georgia Department of Natural Resources took possession of nine tracts of land in South Bibb County, totaling 341 acres. You've got a table in your booklet that shows what those tracks are. On August the 8th, they posted signs on the corners of these parcels identifying them as a wildlife management area, or WMA. They call the new area the Ichikani Creek WMA. On August the 15th, just seven days later, DNR opened the parcels to the public for archery hunting. There's a map in your booklet that shows which uh, areas those are, and the red stars on that map indicate homes. They're occupied homes. No notice was given to anyone down in South Bibb about this change. At the time of the action, approximately 31 occupied dwellings were in near proximity to the newly designated hunting area. 10 of those 31 dwellings are immediately bounded on at least one side by hunting area, and as the map shows, several, including my own home, are bounded on two or three sides by hunting areas. So DNR now permits hunting in our neighborhood for most of the year, 268 days out of the year. They have given seasons for deer, small game hogs, and turkey, there are only two months in the year, June and July, in which there's no hunting season. They permit hunting at all hours of the day or night during the small game season, which is 198 days of the year. So 24-7, uh, we can have people in these areas near our homes. Hunting is permitted with crossbows, longbows, recurve or compound bows of unlimited draw weight. Broadhead arrows are required by DNR for deer or hog hunting. These are high-powered, lethal weapons. A modern crossbow can have a draw weight of 150 pounds and send an arrow at speeds up to 400 feet per second. That's about a quarter of a second from one end of this room to the other, commissioners. The range on these weapons is a maximum of about 400 yards. DNR permits hunters to park their vehicles at any point along the margins of St. Clara Drive, McCarroll Drive, Ridgely Court, or Zora Place, and freely enter any WMA parcel on foot, accessing the sides of our residential property lines without limitations to stalk game, scout for game, still hunt game, or set up hunting stands or hunting blinds, including immediately outside our private property lines. Hunters may thus observe without impediment the private activity and personal possessions of the residents of these streets. 
Though DNR has published safe zones for eight of the 163 WMAs in Georgia, and you have a table that shows you which eight those are, no safe zone is published for Ichikana Creek WMA. Our appeals to DNR to establish safe zones have been denied. This is all the more outrageous when one considers that wood storks in the Big Duke's Pond WMA just east of Macon have been given a 1,700 foot safe zone. Commissioners, these are birds, and yet the uh, residents of South Bibb get nothing. We have zero in terms of safe zone. In contrast to the birds, uh, the walls of some of our homes are now as close as 40 feet or less to DNR authorized hunting areas, well within potentially deadly range. These dangers are real and they're ongoing. The season is open right now. Some of us hesitate to even let our children outside to play. The effect of the policy has been to dangerously and irresponsibly expose the residents of South Bibb County to unacceptable risks from hunting. Who can tell when an arrow may ricochet or a hunter may overshoot or accidentally discharge his weapon? These risks are now borne solely by the residents of South Bibb County and not by anyone from DNR. DNR has effectively stripped away our privacy and security. We now, may now observe any number of strangers driving up and down our neighborhood streets looking for places to hunt. On any day or night, we can open our windows or step out onto our front porches to be met by the prying eyes of a stranger. And we have no grounds on which to call law enforcement. It's perfectly legal. Perhaps unintentionally, DNR has created a useful facade behind which thieves, traf traffickers, poachers, peeping toms, or other criminals may now hide. Anyone may freely navigate our streets under the pretense of hunting, whether or not that is his true purpose. Mr. We Larry, are thus impeded in our ability right. to... to uh, your, ti your time has expired, but you have done a wonderful job uh, of presenting this to us, and I think we okay. all understand and appreciate this does appear to be something that we're going to have to take up with DNR. Uh, okay. Right. Can I properly. read my appeal to you? I'll jump to the end. If you give me 30 more seconds, sir, please. With, without objection, 30 more seconds. Thank you very All much. All right. DNR has nearly 1 million acres of land currently open to public hunting in Georgia. The Ichikana Creek WMA adds 341 acres, which is less than four one hundredths of 1% of the land that's already available to Georgia hunters for hunting. So it's almost nothing, it's negligible. Uh, my appeal commissioners, we are not opposed to hunting. We're not opposed to DNR managing property. We are opposed to hunting near our homes. And we appeal to you to, with, to uh, work with uh, DNR to compel them to withdraw those hunting permissions immediately, not to allow them to open the 2019-2020 season, which they are fully intending to do is to open the season this August and let this cycle for a whole nother year. We appeal to you to, to, uh, to get them to stop that so that we can enjoy our safety again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. We, we appreciate this information. Thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, we, we have a group uh, here, uh, and I hope they'll identify a spokesperson. They identify as friends of the Little Richard House, and they want to talk about Jefferson Long Park. Thank you very much for being here. Would you would you please uh, identify yourself so that we can make a make a note? Uh, my name is Shirley Jordan. Hey, Miss Jordan. This is my first time doing this, so y'all bear with me for a minute. <laughs> no, um, you you're fine. Go right go right we, ahead, Miss Jordan. We had some other members. They couldn't make it tonight because this is not our normal meeting night. Uh, but we're board members for the Little Richard House. We have planned um, an opening for March the 16th. And we have concerns about the, the park. Uh, right now, there's a tenant that has moved in in the gazebo uh, there in the park. Uh, the park is very incomplete. And um, there are some temporary graffiti that's uh, taped down to the sidewalks over there, which is taken away from the beauty of the park. And we are very concerned because, you know, we have children that's up near school if they want to go and visit the park. And you have someone that has... Uh, taking a position as a home there in the park is not good. And then the other question is that 
being that the Little Richard House is directly across from the park, uh, we wanted to know if it was possible for us to uh, manage the park. So that was our uh, other question for that. M manage the Jefferson Long Park? Yes, because for our understanding, when we called to ask about the use of the park, no one can give us direction on who we need to talk to. Okay. Uh, point well made, and we, we appreciate that. Uh, that certainly all comes on the parks and beautification. Uh, we accepted Jefferson Long Park for maintenance and operations that ought to fall under uh, parks and beautification, I would say, because it's a, it's a, a passive-use park, no recreation facilities there. So we'll see if we can't get somebody to get in touch with you. If you'll give us a phone number or some way, Ms. Jordan, we can get back in touch with you. We'll try to let you know who you ought to talk to at Parks and Recreation about any problems you're having with Jefferson Long Park. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, next, got Mr. Willie Frazier. Uh, Mr. Frazier wants to talk about uh, t uh, several things about how helpful our local government and centers are to citizens in Macon Bibb County. Mr. Frazier, thank you very much for being in for your patience, sir. You're recognized for five minutes. How you doing? And thank you, Mayor, again for being here tonight and commissioners. Um, I passed a lot of things that I wanted to speak about normally on our list because I felt the need to speak about Crystal Lake. The reason why is because I've seen in the news the things that happen, power being shut off, water being shut off to citizens of Macon. And I, as I continue every week to stand for citizens of Macon in this city because I care, I can't sit here and watch our government and our city not stand for these citizens in Crystal Lake. So I stand here tonight in awe with almost tears in my eyes because it hurt me to know that these are people that pay taxes in this city live in this city and do the things that we do and to hear them not have an answer for help at you all's pre-commission meeting almost caused me to cry back there because you know what you are the leaders and we are the leaders in this city and we if we don't care about our citizens who do we care about i know that some of you care hey, i'll tell you my hats off to you and virgil watkins i've seen y'all in the news i've seen y'all trying to do things to rectify this and it's a hard thing but we as citizens and leaders of Macon need to do whatever we can because I feel like if I go out there and I get hit by a car because it don't have nothing to do with you would you let me lay out there and die in the streets or would you do the human thing to come out there and try to get an ambulance or get somebody to come and help me now you ask yourselves what is the human thing to do because you're our government, you're our leaders, you're our out front people. You're the ones that we count on when we don't have nobody else to count on. That man that owned that apartment ought to be paying some type of price, some type of taxes. Yeah, it's private, but we all live in private stuff, but we still pay our government. So ain't no way in the world somebody can tell me that we can't do something when there's money going out on everything but the very things that should care with, which is your citizens. These are the people that vote you in, vote you out, stand for you that you stand for. And you're allowing anybody to come in and sell property and do us any kind of way? Really? We have got to, like Virgil Watkins said, do better. We got to stand better for this community. And you know what, if they can't stand any better for this community or anybody that's in leadership, then choose me. I guarantee you I'll stand for you because you know what, with all these tax, tax exempt places and different stuff, somebody need to pay taxes so we can help somebody and so we can help ourselves. We got to change this. I trust you all and I depend on you all to make these changes and make these differences and make the right choices, stuff like that. That's what drew me here is not to do this on my own, but try to help us help you to do better. And we need to do better. Help me help us to do better. Because I intend to do it. Do we have to go back and do it the old way? Do we have to pick it? Do we have to pull it together, put some signs together? My name is Willie Frazier. My phone number is 420-1322. 478-420-1322. Call me. I will pick it with you, stand with you, stand for you. 
because I'm tired of what I see. We got to change somewhere. I don't care what your nationality is. I don't care what your color is, your thought, your idea. It don't matter. If it's a problem and different stuff like that, I'll be glad to stand with you in this city because I love this city and I know we can do better. I know this is the place that we're supposed to be. I won't believe nothing less and I won't take nothing less. Help these people because they don't have nowhere to go and it wasn't their fault. That building out there, land bank, need to be knocking that building down. They need to be closing that. And they need to be putting it down. If there's no water and no way of living in there, then why are we knocking down all these good buildings and then letting the ones stand that sit around here treating our citizens like this? I'm going to be watching this and see what it is that we can do. Thank you, A.L. Tillman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. We appreciate it. Gwen Westbrook is here. Also wants to talk to us about Crystal Lake. <clears throat> I want to thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I, everybody here is familiar with the Crystal Lake situation. And I'm here tonight to call on our government to act on this Crystal Lake situation. Um, the night that they were evacuated from their properties, I know there were citizens that came out to help these people. But as far as our government, we, we have to do something. We cannot just allow these people to just be they're homeless, basically. And if it wasn't for the, some of the people that stepped in to try to help these people find housing, but the, the situation is people were being told to, um, to live at the Salvation Army, live at the uh, Salvation Army. I want us to put ourselves, just imagine ourselves staying at the Salvation Army because even though you, if you go to the Salvation Army, you have to leave the next day. You can't stay at the Salvation Army all day. So, the NACP has agreed to try to help people get moved, but the issue is you have people living on the tenth floor that can you they can't move their belongings from the tenth floor downstairs. We're asking for the government to help the NACP get these people moved out of these out of this high rise because you, you just can't move a sofa from the tenth floor. You, you've got to have some type of equipment to move these people, to just leave these people on their own and not give them any type of assistance. I'm just appalled. I, 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 I just don't know. I, I don't even know what to think. And to just watch these people emotionally has affected these people emotionally. It's more involved now than just being evicted out of their uh, property. It's more in-depth than that. You, you're talking about uh, somebody being moved for a couple of days. Now you're talking about somebody being evicted, even though we know that it has to go through the courts. But people don't know their rights because they started moving as soon as they got this notice on their doors. People's property is ruined. Like I said, it's much more in-depth. Georgia Legal Services was taught with these tenants on Sunday, but Georgia Legal Services only handles certain issues. This is more in-depth. We're talking about lawsuits because these people – property has been destroyed and so we're asking them for the government here to step in and to help give these people some assistance if this had a, you know people it should have been some type of discussion somewhere with code enforcement before it got to this got this far and so it's just been ignored it depending on what class of person people you are and where you live it's just ignored people don't want to discuss it it's a it's a conversation that people don't want to discuss but it's very real this would have been taken care of if it had been in bass road north making it wouldn't have gotten this far thank you thank you Ms. westbrook we appreciate you being here appreciate your comments uh, shanita davis uh, sh also wants to talk to us about uh, a crystal lake apartment so uh, shanita thank you very much for being here good to see you you're recognized for five minutes Again, um, I echo the same sentiments um, as some of my other uh, community members have already spoken. Again, I'm Shanita Davis, I'm founder and director of In His Image Agency. For the, some of you that do not know me, um, I have served this community in a variety of ways from I worked at 
uh, Bibb County DFACS. I was a correctional sergeant at the Department of Juvenile Justice, as well as um, Workforce Development Director. I've worked at uh, River Edge Behavior Health Center. I say all that to say um, I love my community. I love the members of this community. I believe that our community is worth fighting for. Um, you know, I've overcame some challenges that I had to grow up here in this community, overcoming two drug addicted parents, being a high school dropout, a mother of four by the time I was 20. So I understand some of the plights and things that go on in our community, which brings us up to Crystal Lake. And as Ms. Westbrook mentioned that some people in the community had stepped up and decided to try to help those individuals where I'm that person that decided I was at home in my home in East Macon and I saw a Facebook live that the news was doing and said that residents had one hour to leave the property. And at that moment, all kinds of emotions went through. It's Friday, 4.30 in the afternoon. Any type of social service agency is getting ready to go home on that afternoon, that evening. I text my commissioners and ask them what I what could I do, Commissioner Watkins, Commissioner Tillman, I text them and ask them what what can I do to help? I don't know what I can do, but I cannot just sit here and I know that these are women and children, people that need help. What can I do? They were doing a press conference at that time on on I got in my car and I went to the scene. And when I got there to the scene, it was chaotic all kinds of emotions, people crying, people angry, people mad, because they have no choice in what was going on in the matter at that time. And what, it, it, was, it, was, it was heartbreaking, because although they were being told, go to the Salvation Army, some people didn't have transportation. And nobody asked, did you have transportation to get there? They didn't have transportation. As someone already mentioned before, when you're at the Salvation Army, and I know because I stayed there, I've been homeless and stayed there with three little boys, and, and by the grace of God, I had my car at that time. So when you have to get up in the morning and leave at 8 o'clock, I, I, I can at least get in my car and ride around. So if someone has to get there and, and go over to the Salvation Army and leave at a certain time, and, I, and I, I, Salvation Army is a great partner. We have some great community resources here. However, in this particular situation, many people were still at work, and I, I need people to understand these are not – making housing authority, this is not affordable housing, this is not some kind of subsidy. The one bedroom apartment costs $675. This is the working class people that have gone, they have paid their rent, then the water get turned off, and then they are asked that they have to leave and go where, and leave their stuff, and leave their stuff there. It's getting dark outside. So inside of the rent office was people that were sitting there with no answers, no solutions, no family. Because if you're in a situation like I have been in, sometimes, sometimes you don't have anywhere to go. Or they don't want you to bring all your kids with you. We have a mother that had eight kids, a lady that had six kids. They just sitting there. People walking all around, having all kinds, nobody talking to them. I go to them, are you okay? No, ma'am, we don't have anywhere to go. So me and Marsha Talley from Registered and Ready decided, let's see if we can get some money to take the people to the hotel and see what we could possibly do. That night, we took six families to the hotel. That's how much we raised. The next night, we added six more families because it was supposed to be temporary. They were supposed to be able to go back to their homes by Saturday or by Sunday or by Monday. Now here we are 12 days in. We've been t at the highest point. It was 23 families. That's 80 people that was at the hotel. Almost 12 to $1,500 a day. I thank this community because the community stepped up and made donations. They gave. They, they called. What can we do? Can we give gift cards? Can we give baskets? And can we do this? They stepped up and made sure because nobody wants to be in that predicament. I didn't want to be in the predicament when it happened. It is traumatizing. They were stressful, but this one thing, the smiles on their faces, and I pray that I can have just a few more minutes to say what I need to say. If, when I got there, 
and, and explain it to them that the donations is coming from the community. I need y'all to understand and see. This is not some organization that wrote out a huge, big old check or some kind of big grant. These was, people went on Facebook and gave $5 or $10 here and here and here, that they stepped up and was willing to do what it need to be done to ensure that people had somewhere to go food to eat, not to mention you get the everyday calls. Ms. Davis, how do you go over to the to the Salvation Army and apply? How do you go to EOC? They didn't have to do that before because they paying regular rent. And what is sad and what is very frustrating when I'm looking at someone, they saying, but why isn't our government or where is our mayor? I can't answer the question. I want to make sure that you got somewhere to lay down at night. I want to make sure that you got somewhere for you and your kids. I, I got six people, six children in one hotel room doing the very best that we can and we've begun to transition them. We've had people that have moved into their apartment but this is a community concern, a community crisis. And it's good to sit behind desk and, and say, well, we already have things in place. That's what the Salvation Army is for. That's what EOC is for. That's what, but all of those things have a process in place. There is no snap the button and flip the switch. There's an application you got to fill out. You got to wait time. And in the meantime, there's somebody that needs a roof over their head that night. Otherwise, those people would have still been sitting there in the rent office and somebody would have said, well, I guess I'll give you a ride to the Salvation Army. And what we did was try to do the best that we could possibly do to ensure that women and children, disabled people in a building with no elevator on the fifth and sixth floor. I got a lady that just had open heart surgery walking up and down those stairs. We have failed them. We have failed them on so many levels, and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to me because it happened to me. Thank you, Ms. Davis. And I pray that as we leave and we go forward, that we do something to ensure that this never, ever happens to anyone else again. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Appreciate you being here and appreciate your report, and thank you for your comments. Uh, I've got uh, one point of personal privilege. Okay. Uh, no, no points of personal privilege uh, requested. We've reached the end of our agenda. Commissioner Watkins, point of personal privilege. Here, so, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Walken. We, we appreciate appreciate that. Uh, we've reached the end of our agenda. Can I get a motion to adjourn? We've got a motion to adjourn without objection. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. calling about the letter that Chris already had. Yeah, so that was yeah. Really cool. Chris told me, because I was standing there, he said, who are you calling? I said, Abby. He said, I took care of it. It's literally, it was one of those oh. things where it was like, okay, I need to request this, but it just took me forever. Okay, so good. Thanks, sweetie.